If you've always wanted to own a venue or just manage a successful venue, you want to stay tuned because I'm speaking to an expert today and I'm picking her brain for you. Hi, I'm Jodi Ann Rowe, founder of The Event Certificate, and I work with event planners and wedding planners to help them uplevel their digital marketing. That's right, I'm helping you turn clicks into clients. And guys, I started my business from the couch in my condo and moved from making nothing to working on five and six figure events, and I wanna help you do the same. So today, I wanna introduce you to someone who just honestly blows my mind whenever I speak to her about what it's like to own a venue. So today I'm bringing on Bonnie Hawthorne and Bonnie is the owner of the Be Suite. She also owns Be Seated and Be Eclectic Events. That's right, she's a successful lady. And today I wanted to talk to her about the venue portion of her business because this is not her first venue. She's owned venues before that's been successful. And I know a lot of us as event planners and wedding planners, when you're in the events industry, sometimes you want to branch out, look into different areas. So if you're thinking about venue, I'm going to pick Bonnie's brain to see if this is where you need to be. So I'm just going to jump right into interviewing Bonnie for you. Guys, if you have questions, drop them in the comments below. Bonnie, thank you so much for joining me here today. So um, my first question to you is going to be one that I know that a lot of our community members have been asking, and that's what is it like to actually start and own a venue? Uh, well, good morning, Jody, and thanks uh, for having me. Um, it's it's exciting, it's nerve wracking, but I say if you do your research and you know what your niche is, and uh, you've gone to the county, you've gone to zoning and things like that, it's it's really exciting, it's fun. But I, like I said, you have to have a lot of steps and things in process before starting. It's That's just not nice. something that you can just say, "Oh, I want a venue and just go out and rent a building and think you can hold events," because it's, it's really not that simple. So I shouldn't just go buy a building tomorrow is what you're saying? Exactly, exactly, exactly. Uh, you have to know the zoning laws and everything, so exactly. Okay, and for those that are watching, what are some of the things that you were surprised about when you first uh, purchased a venue? Like what were some of the things you weren't expecting that they well, should probably also look out for? Yeah, um, actually like zoning, you really need to be aware that, like I said before, you just can't go rent a building or purchase a building and think, okay, I can just move in and start doing it. You have to go to zoning, it has to be properly zoned, you have to have the fire marshals to come out. Um, you, if you're going to do liquor, you have to make sure that it's, a, you know, different counties and different states have different rules and regulations for that. You right. just can't sell liquor. You might have to sell food. So it, there is a lot that, you know, I thought, oh, well, yeah, we can just, you know, sell liquor here. But no, our county, you have to serve liquor. I mean, excuse me, you have to serve food. And we don't serve food. We allow outside catering. So we cannot sell liquor. Yeah. Uh, so let's say you don't sell liquor. Is it something someone else is able to bring in? Like if I rent your venue? Yes, you can certainly bring uh, liquor in. But um, in our county, you have to have a licensed bartender. And uh, also, if the venue doesn't have liquor liability insurance, you must purchase liquor liability insurance. Yes. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. So insurance, <laughs> okay, yes. so that's a good one because then that leads me into another question. So I was nowhere of the insurance thing and I'm sure a lot of people aren't. So in terms of the legal stuff, like what's one legal requirement that you think most people should be aware of before they purchase a venue? First of all, um, I, you know, it takes a lot of research. But once again, it's not something you can just jump into and, and get started. But one thing I must say, your contract, I get a lot of people say, oh, I said, well, don't forget your contract, all the legalities that must go into your contract. So and they say, I can just, I'm not going to reinvent the wheel. I'm just going to download another venue's contract. But that venue's contract may not uh, be applicable to where you're holding, you're renting or buying your venue. Because like I said, the county laws are different. The state laws are different. So um, spend the money. It's all right to use theirs as some bare bones but spend the money to go to a lawyer to have them to, to um, rewrite it to your state regulations. So that's the one thing I would say, make sure your contract is hard and um, everything is on point with that because my goodness, you can run into some terrible, terrible problems. Once again, like for instance, the liquor, 
you know, if you don't have liquor liability insurance or you haven't had your uh, client to purchase it, they go out, they have an accident, you're liable. Oh, you know? I did yeah. not know that. <laughs> yes. So, I mean, and, and that goes with any, um, even if you're an event planner, um, if you, they're s serving liquor, just make sure that they have that liquor liability insurance because you are also considered as a host and, um, yeah, everything could fall back on you. Mm -hmm, certainly. So what you're saying is don't go to lawdepot.com, download just a standard thing and use it. Exactly. Exactly. Because once again, it may not be applicable to your state or your county. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> okay, so I know so many people want to start a venue. It seems like this really fun thing to do. You just purchase something and the clients just roll in. But what's mm -hmm. one thing that you would say to someone to just ensure they know before they go in to ensure that owning a venue is the right business decision for them? First of all, I, I would say you have to have a passion for serving the people. You know, you, you really do. And um, venues are expensive. It's not a get rich quick thing, you know, you've got to go in so with the will be six figures the next week? <laughs> no, exactly not. You know, it takes time to uh, get a return on your investment. And then one thing people are not aware, they think that, oh, I'm going to hire these people. I'm going to have this team to come in. You can't count on that in the beginning. You've got to be willing to roll up your sleeves, mop floors, clean toilets, take out trash, you know, the whole nine yards in the beginning. Um, and if you can do that, God bless you. But, you know, sometimes people don't have the, the revenue to do that. But in, if your staff doesn't show up, you've got to know every um, part of your business, how it works. Um, and so, like I said, you might have to jump in at any moment. Sometimes it's a glorious job and sometimes it's not. Mm -hmm. It's not always With true. anything. <laughs> well, that's yeah. true. Okay, mm -hmm. now I'm going to ask you a success question because mm -hmm. you are a successful business owner. And this is not your first venue. So mm -hmm. in terms of success, what's one tip that you give to someone in terms of the process and managing the venue that you say, if you have this, or maybe it's more than one for you, you know, mm -hmm. this is definitely something you need to have in place on the path to having a successful business. So what is the process? Yeah. yeah, I would say your processes. Um, not only your CRM, uh, like for instance, this year I had um, surgery and I couldn't come to my venue. And I thought to myself, well, who's going to do my, my tours? Because my venue coordinator has a full-time job. Well, we automated our venue. We oh, made wow. it, so, yeah. So we made it where they can, I can unlock the doors remotely. They can come in. We have a camera system that I can talk to them. And I've really been playing with that a lot lately. Oh, and it so is, good. yeah. And it is so much better because I don't have to be on site. I could be out of town and still schedule and they unlock the door remotely, talk to them through the camera, lead them through the venue, leave literature out where they can take the literature. So I would say, you know, get your, even for the, um, the heating and cooling system, we've automated that. So now, you know, my venue coordinator doesn't have to come in an hour before, turn the air, the heat on or whatnot, what have you. Um, everything is automated. And even your processes, you know, as far as how are you going to collect your money, you know, um, how, I mean, how's your, uh, client going to complete their contract? How do they get it back forth, back and forth to you? All those set you up for success. And in this uh, day and time, the Gen Zs and the millennials, uh, they don't have, they don't want to waste their time. You know what I'm saying? They it. like automation. They like something that's quick and easy and accessible. I can't tell, uh, tell them, oh, you can come to, I'm only touring on Monday, Wednesday and Fridays between 10 and two. I mean, they have things to do just like okay. anybody. So having those automated processes has really uh, taken our business to another level. Yeah. Guys, I don't know if you heard that, but that's the key to success right there. Ensuring your processes are clear. Yeah. Yeah, Bonnie, of course. Is there anything else you'd like to share with us, a potential venue owner, if I'm looking to pick your brain? Is there one tip that you haven't mentioned that you'd like to share? Yeah, well, I would just say, really, it's it's having a venue for me is a dream it's my passion but you know sometimes you're uh, you can get ahead of yourself so be sure to dot your i's cross your t's in the process and make sure it's it's your niche i mean everybody think oh having a big venue is just going to bring me tons of money that's right you know, maybe yeah maybe you want to start small an intimate venue i have an intimate venue and it brings me great success and great joy it doesn't overwhelm me um and people are looking for smaller things i mean 
everybody doesn't have $2,500 to go out and spend on a venue for a baby shower, you know, or intimate wedding or elopement. So that's what I would say. Just find your niche, uh, cross your eyes, I mean, excuse me, dot your eyes and cross your T's. Make sure you're very knowledgeable because it, if, you, if you don't have the knowledge, you're not going to set yourself up for success. And failure is never an option. Yeah, that's, oh my God, guys, are you hearing these gems? <laughs> Thank you so much, Bonnie. Now, Thank if someone want to reach out to you, because I know, like I've spoken to you before, you are a wealth of information on the venue front. If someone mm -hmm. wanted to pick your brain, where can they find you? How can they connect with you? Can they set up a call? Give us all the details. Oh, uh, yes. Yeah. So they can find me on Instagram at, under the B Suite, under B Seated, B Eclectic Events, um, my uh my website, um, you can send me an email at info um, at vsweetus.com. So I'm on all the social media platforms, Facebook. So, you know, if you just want to reach out to me and get some more information or you need some mentoring, I am certainly available to help you. Guys, do you hear that? You don't have to remember all of that. I'm going to drop all her links down below so that you can reach out. So if you're thinking about starting a venue, definitely connect with Bonnie. As I said before, she is a wealth of knowledge, and this is one that you don't want to sleep on. Thanks so much, Bonnie, for joining me and for sharing all your thoughts today. And guys, as I said, if you haven't already subscribed, hit that button. <laughs> Thanks so much. All right. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bonnie, thank you so much for joining us. And of course, guys, if you have any questions for Bonnie, drop them in the comments below, or I've linked all the ways in which you can contact her below for you. So reach out, ask her a question. Don't be shy to pick her brain because you never know your next successful business venture might be right around the corner.